Hey everybody, I'm back with the next video in our series outlining the programs and scripts we'll be using with the Mini ITX BMC build to make it as user friendly and feature rich as possible. And today's video is going to be a pretty big one. We're going to go over XBMC. Now, XBMC uh, stands for Xbox Media Center. It was originally made as a mod to Xbox consoles, but it's branched out to be so much more than that now. And as its name suggests, it's a media center, which means it will take the video files, music files, um, TV shows, movies, things like that, photos, and display them all in a very easy to browse and very sleek interface. As you can see, the skin I'm using is Aeon MQ4. I've used the skin in the previous media center build I made for my family and I really like the features it has and I really like how it looks. So I'll be using it with this build just because it's something I'm familiar with and I know how to customize pretty well. One of the neat features that Aeon MQ4 has is this top level view up here. It can be set to show recently added films, uh, random films, or films you haven't finished watching yet. And it does the same for TV shows, and music, but I haven't added any music yet, so you can't see that. The neat thing about this top level view is, like I said, it just shows you videos that you've added recently, so if you don't know what videos you've finished copying over, you can just check this. As you can see, I'm going through the Disney films I have in my library right now. And all of these were copied over using the copy movie script I made and I'll be outlining that in the next video after this one just to show you guys how I got it set up any um, issues I have with it and how you can set it up for your media center now since I'm down here another benefit of Aeon MQ4 skin is it lets you make these shortcuts and so I've set up shortcuts to update library um, Netflix which I outlined in the Netflix video which launches um, Windows Media Center into Netflix so you can browse Netflix from there the copy movie script that I just mentioned and the movie quiz app now the movie quiz app is really neat it takes all the videos you have in your library and then asks you questions about it like who directed it what was the plot what scene is this uh, video or what movie is this scene uh, video clip from and things like that it's pretty fun and something to do when you're waiting for everyone to you know come into the living room so you can watch a movie or you're making popcorn and your friends are you know waiting to be able to start the movie now, I'm pretty sure I've shown you guys how XBMC's libraries look, but just again, I'm going to go through it real quick. As you can see, everything has fan art and um, cover art, and each video has a description. And all of these descriptions and fan art and video art are being pulled from the internet. For this build, I'm not setting up anything like Ember Media Manager or using, you know, the by hand process of going to IMDB or the TBDB, downloading all the info, downloading the fan art and cover art, and then putting it in a folder. This is all being pulled from the internet. The only files that are in these movie file folders is just the video itself, and XBMC takes care of the rest, which is a really nice feature. And I'd say it works 90% of the time, and then times that it doesn't, you can just go here into the info section for the movie, and then you can update it which is really nice and also the info section shows you actors and these are all from IMDB and things like that and so it's a really nice way to browse all the video files you have and once you get all your blu-rays and DVDs copied in here you will always find something you want to watch even if you're bored because then you can browse through all the videos you have and make a decision based on what you think your tastes are for that you know movie watching session Another neat thing that XBMC does is it has stats. As you can see in the bottom left corner, it shows the movies we have in there as well as ones we've uh, watched and unwatched. It does the same for TV shows. I'm not sure if it does it for music, but like I said, I don't use the music section very much and I have to wait on input from the family I'm building this for to uh, let me know what kind of music they want to put in here. So for now, I'm not going to go over that. And for the most part, XBMC is pretty simple to set up. Um, I'm going to go into the add-on section here and show you what add-ons I have. Now, add-ons are just programs and applications made by the XBMC team and um, hobbyists. 
and really dedicated power users and you can use these to make the experience um, using XBMC really special and customize it to exactly what you want. I'm just going to browse over these sections. I only have the Universal Album Scraper and Album Information, Universal Artist Scraper and Artist Information, LRC Lyrics for Lyrics for Music. Um, I'm using the Movie Database and Universal Movie Scraper for getting movie information. Music video information, I don't really need it, but I have the audio DB just in case. Program add-ons. I'm using Advanced Launcher. Advanced Launcher is hands down my favorite add-on for XBMC. It's amazing. I'm going to make a whole video outlining what it is, how to use it, and what I used um, to make the shortcuts to Netflix, Copy Movie, things like that. And that'll be a future video. I don't want to make this XBMC video way too long. Uh, I have All-in-One. This is that add-on I was mentioning that works with Aon MK4 and lets you know uh, what movies you've recently added or just shows random movies and things like that. Artwork Downloader. I haven't gotten this working yet, but when I do, it'll be pretty neat. Remember how I said that XBMC pulls all that um, fan art and cover art from the internet? Well, this lets you download the fan art it pulls and stores it in a file, so that way the front page slideshow you have set up will always be updated with the most current um, backgrounds and fan art that you have. And so I haven't had time to look into that, but I'll make sure to make a video outlining how I got it set up if I do. Um, XBMC commands. This is just for the remote. I didn't really end up using it, but it's always nice to have just in case. Global search. This just finds files. MCE remote. This is what made the um, Windows remote I outlined in the previous video work so well with XBMC. If you have a Windows Media Center based remote, you should download that out on it. works very well. Movie quiz, like I mentioned earlier, it just makes a quiz out of all the video files you have and it's a really fun little uh, game. And then XBMC library auto update. This just updates your library every so often. Since I'm copying video files in and compressing them, about every 30 minutes or so we can copy a new file in and about every 8 or 9 hours we get a compressed video file out. And so this just makes sure that the library is constantly updated. Uh, for screensaver, we're using the slideshow screensaver. I think you saw it in a previous video I made, but after about 5-10 minutes it will just start displaying fan art images. And it's a really nice screensaver actually. In terms of services, artwork downloader, uh, common plugin cache, QLock, skin widgets, these are all for Aeon MQ4 just to make it run well and it will let you know which add-ons you need and which add-ons are recommended and I can provide a link to the Aeon MQ4 skin uh, discussion thread in XBMC forums and I'll add that in the description. Like I said, as for skin we have Confluence which is the default and then Aeon MQ4. Subtitles, just XBMC subtitles. TV information, I'm using the TVDB, which is pretty much your best option. Video add-ons, I have movie sets, and this is just an add-on to work with and MQ4. Uh, visualization, I won't be using these very well, or very much, but just in case I have these, in case the family I'm making this for uses music a lot. Uh, weather, I have Weather Underground enabled, but I don't like to use it because it doesn't work all that great in XBMC and usually if you're watching a movie or listening to music in XBMC you're not really going to be worried about the weather outside so I made sure to hide that menu in the uh, home screen of Aeon MQ4 and web interface just the default browser but like I said the family I'm building this for isn't planning on using this for anything other than movies, uh, TV series, and music so now I'm going to go into the settings for XBMC, and this is where the video gets a bit long. If you really don't care to know how I set up my XBMC setup for this build, you can probably stop watching now. But if you want to know exactly how I set it up, I'm just going to slowly browse through each section and provide some commentary on it. Nothing really interesting here for appearance. I'm um, using English language, 12 hour clock, uh, file lists, nothing special here. Screensaver, like I said, I'm using slideshow. 
going to the settings, I made it the image folder where I host all of the fan art images for images um, that go with movies, TV shows, music settings, things like that. Into video. Nothing really interesting here. The software and DXV2 settings, that is because we're using the Intel Core Duo uh, processor. And of course, if you're um, confused as to any of these settings and I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video and browse at the settings I have. Uh, in terms of library, this is for music. I didn't really edit much here. I'm pretty sure all of these are default, really. Uh, images. The only reason I really have the photos is because it looks nice when you're browsing XBMC. Weather. Like I said, I really didn't edit anything for weather, but if you want to see settings, there you go. Uh, Add-ons. Like I said, these were all the add-ons I went through uh, a couple minutes ago. And for the more major ones, I will make videos outlining the settings. But really, the only ones that really need any um, settings changed or any tweaking is Advanced Launcher. And that's just because it does so much for you once you get it going. And like I said, I'll make a video for that later on. In terms of system, I'm using a full screen window, and that is just for launching things. Uh, Advanced Launcher works a lot better if you use a full screen window rather than true full screen. Haven't really had an issue with it yet. Audio output. These are the settings you want to use if you're using an AV receiver that supports DTS and DTS HD. But right now, since I'm outputting to the AverMedia capture card, we're not getting the intended results. Uh, input devices. Make sure your remote control can send keyboard presses. That way it just works with the MCE remote script we set up. Internet access. Not really. Um, I have it set to not put the display to sleep when idle or shut down function timer because XBMC, um, it's a great feature to save energy, but the build we made here already is so um, little in terms of power consumption that we don't really need to worry. And it's a lot easier than having to worry about uh, XBMC shutting down your display and then for some reason your display causing issues. And then when you launch XBMC again, it's not in the right resolution or things like that. So I found it's best to just handle all of that um, manually via the remote or a script. Uh, I'm not debugging anything. I don't have a master lock. Network. Um, I haven't really said anything for the network. I believe if you want to, yeah, if you want to use an iPhone or Android remote to control XBMC, you need to enable these, and I did because that may be an option for the family I'm building this for, but for now I'm just using a keyboard and mouse and the remote I outlined in uh, the previous video in this series. Profiles, we're not using any profiles because this is going to be a machine for the whole family. I don't use profiles on my machine either, I don't really see too much of a need for it. And we're back to start. So in terms of the XBMC video, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, the next videos on my list are to outline the auto copy DVD script I made and to outline advanced launcher to help you guys get that set up and working as well as possible. And then we're pretty much done with this mini ITX BMC build. As always, if you like the video, feel free to like, uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions as to things you want me to test or work on next, and subscribe if you like what you're seeing and you want to see more of it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.